afternoon, Galileo. Here there uh, once again to share the good news of the gospel. All the good news that there is uh, in these days, apart from that is the weather. But uh, just to uh, remind you that there is a, a God in heaven and one that we, all of us, young and old alike, we all have to do with, all have to give account to, uh, you know, in that day. And so it uh, can't be nothing more important than that we are ready for that day because, uh, you know, we don't know time is short, as uh, the Bible does say, you know, and short for us all because we're in this world for just a short space of time and then just like everybody else, you know, we're gone, we don't take anything with us, you know, we, uh, you know, we come into the world, the Bible says, naked and that's the way we go out, we don't take the iPhone, we don't take the iPad with us, you know, we, uh, we we'll leave it all behind. You know, here we are today, you know, in these western parts, you know, so many of us, you know, we live for stuff. We live, we live for things, you know. We got uh, houses and they're full of all kinds of stuff, you know. And we're, we're just wed to it, we are married to it. And there's no thought, you know, of, uh, of that day when we do indeed will, you know, breathe our last, you know, Bible says, Bible says it's appointed, you know, for man wants to die. After that then comes, uh, then we, we stand before God, then comes the judgment, you know. So, so now is the time, says God. Now is the accepted time. A time that is acceptable to God. This is the good news, you know, that uh, we are sinners, we are estranged from God. But, you know, God's of a disposition to be reconciled with. It says, you know, that um, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. You know, that uh, God is in a reconcilable mood, you might say, you know. And that the evidence of that is that he sent his only begotten son into the world that to him that we might be reconciled to him. He has done everything necessary. He has provided the means. He has provided the way. He has provided us with His Son. And uh, what's required of us is that we should turn from our neglect of God, our neglect of His grace, our neglect of His, uh, of his Son, and, and that we should turn to Him, you know, forsaking our way, forsaking our sin, and turning to him through his son jesus christ that we might have life eternal in his name two options you know when that time comes we breathe the last out of this world then we're faced we're faced with the judge of all the earth and then uh, then, then then the judgment is passed you know it's uh, it's either well done my good and faithful servant or it's um, depart from me I never knew you. The knowledge of God is in the gospel, my friend. The knowledge of God, I mean the knowledge not about God, but knowledge of God in a relationship and friendship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He sent into the world. And that specifically, uh, deliberately, not an accident, but my friend, in order to, in order to die on that cross, in order that you might be forgiven. Forgiven, sir? Forgiven? No, 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 no. Have a good day, sir. So there you go. You know, some people take and some people come back and give it back, you know, but it's reception of Jesus. It's the reception of the Son of God came to his own, but his own, Bible says, did not receive him, but to them that did, did receive him, to those that believed on his name, he gave the right, the power, the authority, that is, to become children of God. Relationship. 
relationship a bond of friendship with your maker with god man's greatest need i tell you today my friends you might know a lot of things you might know a lot of people but i tell you the deepest need that man has is to know his maker is to know god is to enter into that bond of friendship with god and of course in order for that to happen well, we got to lay down the weapons of our warfare because the Bible says that in the human heart, naturally speaking, as we come into the world, there's enmity. We are, we are, we are at war with God, hostile to God in our sinful minds. We're not subject to His law, cannot be, don't want to be, no desire to be, no will to be, subject to God's law. So you see, we're sinners by nature, and we're sinners by practice. We're at war with God, we're angry with Him, hostile towards Him. So that hostility, that enmity in our hearts has to be laid down. But the good news, again, the good news I tell you is that God's of a disposition to be reconciled with. He's, he's you might say, He's willing, more than willing to be reconciled with. But there's one way, and one way only that you come to Him, and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says, none other name under heaven by which we can be reconciled to God. One way only, Jesus. You got a, a plethora, you got a, a world full of religion. The Oxford University Press says that there's 9,000 900 religions in the world today. Every false idolatrous religion, some people say they think, well, you know, that's just people trying to find their own way back to God. No, it's not. Because they know God. They know God. They have the knowledge of God innately in them, says God. All these false idolatrous religions, they're just another way of turning away from God, not seeking God. Only one way to seek God. He's made himself known, my friends. There's none of, none of us without excuse. There's no such a thing as an atheist on planet Earth. They don't exist. They don't exist, my friends, because of all the things that God has made, the wonder of his creation, the beauty of this day, you know? Here today, you got this lovely spring day, you know, and maybe you're feeling thankful for it, but you've got nobody to thank for it because you don't know Him, because you're not related to Him, because you're separated from Him. By your sin, you're cut off from Him. Uh, unthankfulness, my friends, that, that's another, another reason why the displeasure of God's upon us. Are ignoring of, a, a rejection of him. And here, here's the sad truth, you know, that when you say, when you deliberately and willfully say, I don't want to know your God, don't want to know his Bible, don't want to know his son, don't want to know his salvation, God in effect says, okay, okay, I'll give you what you want. I'll open another door for you. I'll give you over to another power. I'll give you, I'll give you what you want. And so he gives us more sin, more and more sin, until we're ruined, until we're beyond the pale, until we're beyond God's redemption. I hope that's not you today. My friends, we're here to tell you how, how you can be right with God, young men. Eh? Get right with God. Eh? Get Christ into you. Before you ruin, before I, you can laugh, before you ruin yourself. Let Christ have you and redeem you and reconcile you to God and bring you into this, this glorious, I tell you, wonderful bond of friendship with God to know your maker as your friend, as your redeemer, as your savior, the lover of your soul and the one able to blot out your sins, take that enmity, that hostility out of your heart take it out root and branch and give you a love for him instead of a hatred give you a love for god that's what you are made for 
That's what you exist for, to love God. And that's sin, my friends, not loving God. Not having God for your God, that's sin, my friends. That's a capital crime, that's unbelief. And because of that unbelief, my friends, not only, not only are we separated from God now in this world, but will be for all eternity, unless, that is, unless by the grace of God. So we come here today, my friends, tell you about God's grace, not religion. You got a world for it. You want religion? You got a world, take your pick. Synagogue, mosque, temple, some churches even if you like, they'll make you religious. They'll give you all the religion that you want, but they won't bring the grace of God to you. They won't tell you what you need to hear. They won't tell you about your sin. They won't tell you about your need for repentance. They won't tell you about your need for faith in Christ alone, grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone. That's what reconciles us to God. Nothing else, my friends, nothing else. It's grace that you need, not religion. And what's grace? Grace is the favor of God, the smile of God upon you. What's grace? The free favor of God. No cost. The moment you say, well, like some establishments, you know, like the world religions, like the Roman Catholic Church, they tell you you've got to do something for it. It's no longer grace. It's no longer grace. The moment you say you have to do something, you have to pay something, it's no longer grace. The word means gratis, free gratis. It costs you nothing, but it costs God. It costs His Son, Jesus Christ. He had to come down into this world. That's what Jesus came for, the Bible says. Christ Jesus came into the world not to make you wealthy, healthy, prosperous, religious. He came to save sinners. And that's what we all are. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You what, sir? Big pardon, sir? Can't hear you. Speak up. All sinners, my friends. All sinners to a man, to a woman. There's not a man, there's not a woman, not a child in this world that hasn't sinned. We come out of the womb in a sinful nature. And right from the very get-go, my friends, we practice, we practice sin. So you see, the longer you've been in this world, well, the greater your danger is, because the more you sin, the more the debt, you know, has been piling up day after day. So grace, grace, my friends, grace is what we are bringing to you here today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace that saved. The free grace that saved. The grace and the love of God in sending His Son into the world to die on that cross to take the penalty, to take the curse, and to take the wrath of God because of man's sin. You know, we think so very lightly, you know, about our wrong doings these days even in your churches today oh the talk about sin you know it's so it's so very light and so trivial as though it's something of no account no matter god will forgive it think of the cross think of what jesus christ bore in his body on that tree in order that men and women might be forgiven the enormity of what he bore on that cross so that your sin could be forgiven. I tell you, it's enormous. The depth of our depravity, eh, friend, the half, the half, I tell you, has not been told. We are, the Bible says, every one of us. Who do you think is the most evil? Who do you think is the most wicked man about today? Some of you would maybe say, uh, Mr. Putin, that Russian man, you know, who started that war in Ukraine. Or maybe perhaps child murderers, molesters. Can I tell you, my friends, that every one of us, yourself and myself, even I with the grace of God in me, every one of us, I tell you, we are capable of the most horrendous 
the vilest sins imaginable. Every one of us. Only one, one person who keeps you back, who holds the reins, who restrains you, and that's God. But I tell you, let loose. Let loose. You are capable of the greatest wickedness that you could possibly imagine. That's our nature, apart from God. To be apart from God's a state of death. That's how we come into the world. Not living, not living. You come into the world existing for however long, 20, 40, 70 years, and then you depart this world and you carry on in a state of death for all eternity. Unless by the grace of God, you connect with Christ, the living Christ who is able to impart life to you. You never know what life is. You never experience life until by faith you connect with Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no life apart from Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. There's no life apart from God. Dead in your trespasses and sins, cut off from God. Dead to God. Spiritually dead, no spiritual life in you. And why Jesus said you must be born again. That's the first requirement, my friends. God must breathe life into your soul. He must make you alive. He must breathe the breath of life into your soul. How you doing, sir? He must breathe the breath of life into your soul. He must put his life, his life, the life of Christ in you. Then you live. And come, says Jesus, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, my friends, there's life to be had in Jesus. There's life enough, I tell you, for five worlds if you would come to Jesus. But will you come to him? You will not come to me that you might have life, he says. There lies the problem. Not Christ, not Jesus. There's life in him. And he bids you come to him. But you're not willing to come to him. There's the problem. No, I don't want to. Don't desire to. Don't will to. Will not. No, I won't come. So you don't get life. You don't get eternal life. My, my sheep, he says, they hear my voice. They follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. When that day comes and you breathe your last, you cock your toes up and go out of this world. You die just like everybody else. You stand before the judge and then it's eternal death. You continue on in that state, my friends, of death in which you came into the world. But today, my friends, life is set before you. Today, everlasting life, whosoever believeth, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Many, many people, I dare say, in the city of Carlisle, just like everybody else, everywhere else in the country, men are perishing now, perishing in their, in their minds, broken minds, mental problems, they're gross, they're many in our nation today. Never been a time like it. Broken mindedness, perishing in their bodies. Huh? Why all the health issues? I tell you, all the eating and drinking, all the health care, all the diet and all the NHS won't make it right. Only one person who can bring healing to a broken mind, a broken body, and a broken soul, and that's Jesus. He's the mighty healer. He's the healer of sin sick souls, my friend. That's what he came for, to heal your soul. He came to make you well, spiritually, eternally. He came to give you life. He came to raise you from the dead. He came to open your tomb and to loose you from it. He came, my friend. Oh, he came, I tell you. And how did he do it? How did he accomplish it? He came and he lived the kind of life that you ought to have lived. I ought to have lived. But none of us have and none of us can. A perfectly righteous life. A beautiful life. The most beautiful man that ever walked the face of this earth. And what did you do to him? You crucified him. 
Oh, you see, I wasn't there. Yes, you were. We were all there. We all of us with one voice cry, crucify him, away with him. He's not fit to live. We were all there, every one of us, you and I included. We drove the nails into his body. My friend, he lived that beautiful life. He died that death on the cross to take the curse that lies upon us because of man's sin. That's why he had to be crucified. That's why he had to be hanged on a tree because cursed is the man who's hanged on a tree. Not fit for heaven, not fit for earth. That's why he was hanged on a tree. Bearing the curse that was due not to him but to you and I. To lift the curse from off us, to redeem us from it. And my friends, to take the wrath of God. All the wrath, fearsome wrath of God, I tell you. Due to a lost humanity was heaped upon the lovely Son of God. Hell fell upon him. And you know what? He was bearing that. He was taking that for sinners like you and I. He was bearing that in love. No pressure on him. No force. Not made to. He left heaven willingly. He came down into this sin-cursed world and lived, this, lived in this swamp of human sin for 33 years. Willingly, lovingly, went to that cross voluntarily, my friends. No pressure on him because he loved sinners. That's why he loved sinners and he gave himself for them. He went to that cross willingly and lovingly for a sinful soul such as you that that wrath of God might be lifted off you the curse of God taken away, redeemed, set free, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But I tell you, my friends, there's no other remedy. There is nobody else. No one else who died for your sins. Popes of Rome don't do that for you. Muhammad didn't die for sinners. Buddha didn't die for sinners. Jesus Christ alone shed his blood to redeem us from the curse to set us free and to give us life that you might live for the first time in your existence that you might live for the first time as long as you've been on planet earth i heard the testimony of a man a man who was saved in a church one evening he was he was gone 80 years of age and he was saved he was washed in the blood of the Lamb. He was redeemed. And he sat there all the rest of the night crying and weeping, howling. He said, I wasted my life. I wasted my life. Don't wait until you're 80 years of age. But of course, if you are that age, it's not too late. He got saved. So can you. But my friend, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, there's no other answer to sin. There is no other answer to sin. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? I tell you, there's power in the blood. Wonder-working power. Miracle-working power in the blood of the Lamb. To wash you, make you clean. The life is in the blood to give you life from the dead make you to live everlastingly eternally never to die I am the resurrection and the life says Jesus he that believes on me though he die yet shall he live do you believe this he says do you believe this faith is the key that opens the treasure chest of God's grace Faith, my friend. Faith opens the door. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. That gate opens up to faith and only to faith. Faith in Jesus, that is. 
Faith alone in Jesus opens the gate, the gateway into heaven, the gateway into that friendship with God, the gateway into the forgiveness of God, the pardon of God, and all the pleasures and all the treasures that God has for sinful men and women who he reconciles to himself. Oh, faith, my friends, faith. Faith not works. Faith, my friends, none of us merit. None of us merit this grace. It's free. That's what the word grace means. My friends, it's free. It's absolutely free. Not faith and works. Not your good deeds. Not your doing something. Not your paying something. Not your accomplishing something. What could you do, I ask you? What could you do to pay the price for your sin? What could you do, my friend? What could you offer to God as a sacrifice for your sin that would be acceptable to God? Nothing, my friends. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You must come empty-handed. You must come with nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Pleading only the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died on the cross, who paid the price in full, who has done everything necessary, all that's necessary to be done. He accomplished it all. He cried from that cross. It is finished. It is finished. All done and dusted. Nothing for us to do but believe. And even believing's not a work. Even believing's not a work. My friend, it's a resting. It's a resting upon Jesus. It's a resting in Jesus. It's a resting upon what he has done. What he has accomplished is dead is rising, his reigning in glory and power and sin to come, I tell you, very soon to come with his holy angels, the Bible oh, says, in flaming fire to take vengeance upon them that know not God and who obey not the gospel. Don't be one of those. Oh, don't be like that, my friend. You hear the gospel today. You hear the call of the gospel. What is it you say? Repent and believe the gospel. That's what it is. Turn from your sin. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. He will show mercy, abundantly pardon because of Jesus and because of his shed blood. Obey the gospel today. Hear the gospel today. Repent and believe the gospel today. So I'm going to get your heart, your wash, and your mouth washed out. Very unclean. What a way to talk. An old man, uh, like myself, with grey hair, he seemed to be out of this world, and that's his view of the love and grace of God in Jesus Christ. I tell you, you know, we, are, we have that saying, don't we? There's no fool like an old fool. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Today, my friends, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Many do. One man just did. And the more you harden yourself, the harder it becomes to repent and believe the gospel. So today, hear the call, obey the call, King Jesus calls. The coming Jesus, the risen, reigning, mighty Son of God, coming soon to judge the world in righteousness. He calls you today, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel, he says, Carlyle. Hear me, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom. 
of grace, of love, of favor, of forgiveness, of eternal life by repenting and believing. Today, my friend, do it. Do it today, my friend. Hear the call of grace. Repent, we unbelieve the gospel. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word. We've got Bibles, New Testaments, Gospel booklets. You'd like the written Word of God to read for yourself, study, meditate upon, offer to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. Like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you. Bless you and the mercy, Carlisle, upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.